The next thing we're going to talk about is VTAC, and we're going to take on Pulseless VTAC. First, a word about VTAC. Remember, there are three flavors of VTAC. When you see this rhythm on the monitor, remember there are three different kinds of VTAC. There is pulseless VTAC, which we're going to take care of first. There is unstable VTAC, where you have a blood pressure, uh, but the patient is feeling sick or has chest pain, signs of instability. And there is, you won't see this very often, there is such a thing as stable VTAC, where someone doesn't have any symptoms, but they have this very scary rhythm. So first let's do pulseless VTAC, all right? Before we jump in, we're going to do our old favorites. We're going to keep in mind a few things. A, E, I, O, U, Y. A, assess, assess the patient. E, put an EKG as soon as you can. I, get an IV as soon as you can. O, make sure you're giving supplemental oxygen. U, you go get help, activate the 911 system, get an AICD. And why, why did this happen? We should always be thinking about why this happens, okay? So now, Dr. Jacob is going to jump in here because this patient has VTAC and I don't feel any pulse anywhere. While he's getting ready, I'm going to go ahead and start chest compressions right away. We would have another team member giving ventilation. Now, we don't want to pause at all, so he's putting the pads on this time. And he's going to hook up the defibrillator. Notice he clicks it all in there, all right? And as soon as possible, he defibrillates. I'm staying out of the way here so you can see everything. I would be doing chest compressions the whole time here. The idea is, so now we're going to, everybody's going to clear. Okay. So he's set it originally at 200, but he's turning it down for safety reasons, but we would do a full 200 joules. When you have pulseless VTAC, it is the same as VFIP. As far as a person is concerned, there is no circulation whatsoever. So you don't have to worry about agonizing over, gee whiz, oh, should I, should I do this uh, with uh, synchronous? It's, there is no pulse. The person has no perfusion whatsoever. Shock them right away, defibrillate them right away. You don't have time to do synchronous cardioversion because that is precious time taken away from reestablishing effective circulation. So. Think of pulseless VTAC the exact same way you would think of as ventricular fibrillation. Shock as soon as possible. Let's march all the way through the sequence. You recognize it, start CPR right away. You shock, CPR for five cycles, shock again. After that point, you can give either vasopressin or epi. Five more cycles of CPR, reassess, and after that, consider giving antiarrhythmic. What matters? Shocking matters. Chest compressions matter. These are the things that really make a difference in survival. The medications are always secondary. You always want to make sure you pay attention to good chest compressions. Always make sure there's good chest compressions and shock right away. And lest we forget, always think about why this happened. Why is the patient now in VTAC? Now, let's change gears a little bit and talk about unstable VTAC. So here's our rhythm. The patient has a pulse, it's not pulseless VTAC, the pulse is weak, the patient's nauseated, or has chest pain, or can't think straight. So what we have is unstable VTAC. We're going to use, since he's unstable, since he's not pulseless, we're going to use, that's right, synchronous cardioversion. So Dr. Jacob is going to make sure that he presses the sync button before we fire, because in this case, we have time for the pads to read and fire at the right time. You can see it from the arrows and you can see from the, the sine wave that we are now synchronized, so we're okay to fire. Now, what is the correct setting for the synchronous cardioversion? One easy way to remember it is, whether it's monophasic or biphasic, 100 joules works for either one of those. So for synchronous, if you always remember 100 joules, you'll always be right. We are ready to discharge, and we discharge. And immediately after we discharge, we go in and start reassessing. What about stable VTAC? Well, it's like stable tachycardia of any kind. I would get this guy in to see someone right away, but since it is stable, you don't need to shock it. You don't need to do any intervention right now, but you're not going to see stable VTAC too terribly often. Pulseless electrical activity. Well, what does that mean? The, the rhythm looks normal of all things. We have electrical activity in the heart. It looks like a normal sinus rhythm, but 
No pulse, no pulse whatsoever, all right? So we've got to get help, AEIOU, assess, put an EKG on, get an IV in, put on supplemental oxygen, you, you, go get help. Why, why did this happen? Now, since it's pulseless, we're gonna start chest compressions right away. And we're gonna make sure that those compressions are done well, and we're gonna start thinking about those six H's and five T's. Keep in mind the mnemonic. For the six H's, you think about what's in blood. For the five T's, you think about that magic bullet going through the patient's heart. And you have to figure out one of those things. Because the treatment for pulseless elect electrical activity is, above all else, is fixing the cause. If someone has a tension pneumothorax, if someone has a drug overdose, if someone has cardiac tamponade, you can do your CPR all day long, but until you fix the problem, you're not gonna get any better. Now there is chemical treatment for this, and the treatment for that is what? Again, look at your cards. Remember, supplement, this is a supplement, not a replacement of your AHA studies. Take a look at your cards and what do they say do they get to give? They say if the person has no pulse, pulseless electrical activity, the treatment is epinephrine. Try to get that blood pressure up. But the mainstay of therapy for pulseless electrical activity, remember there's, there's nothing to shock here, this is not a shockable rhythm, is good CPR, giving epinephrine, and trying to figure out what that cause is. You can never go wrong with pulse electrical activity getting some fluid in the person, because that is, after all, the treatment if they have tamponade, or if they have tension pneumothorax, or any of these things, they're all gonna respond well if they get fluids. So keep that in mind for pulseless electrical activity.